What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is going to be real simple. We're going to give you some engine updates on our uh, YZ250 WR. I do believe this is the WR. Now I took uh, my bike to the shop the other day and I did have them run the VIN. And for some reason on their computer they were having issues. But luckily the guy had like an old uh, manual book. And uh, we were able to uh, determine that we do have the WR at least by our frame. And uh, the frame on this year will actually match up to the motor. So when you can see this uh, RB, that is your YZ, I believe, I mean the WR, I believe the YZ, it was uh, different letters. And then you can see here our last uh, three digits or or even our last uh, six here, our 000456, that all matches the frame. So that is good news. We are working on the WR and we're actually going to get ready to split this motor today. So we'll be able to double check 100% that we have our uh, wide ratio fourth and fifth gear so once again it should be a taller gear we should get some nice top speed out of this bike topping out around 90 as opposed to 70. also updates on the uh, kx 125 build i went and took this to the shop the other day but forgot to even take the exhaust valve out so something like that exhaust valve you know you're looking at a minimum probably of like an hour labor a good 130 bucks so you know we're going to take that money and use it elsewhere. Speaking of money, we spent, uh, I think it was about 60 bucks. So we have an actual uh, case splitter or crank puller tool today. So that should be a lot easier than dealing with the old wood shim deal that I did on the CR500. I think splitting that case uh, using different size shims and hammering, oh my God, that took me probably a good 20 minutes or so. So what's your time worth at the end of the day? All right, anyway, I'm going to bring you in because the first thing I want to start on is, you can tell on our 125 cylinder, our head, well, when I'm not holding the camera, it pops on just fine. You can see our head is fitting on there no problem. Now let's go over to our 250 here. And you can see no bueno, so we can't get our head on. Now what happened was, once again, when I bought this bike, the cylinder was not on the bike i just put the cylinder on so that way we could uh go through the bike see we had spark and things like that but if you look here on this stud it took a major whacking and it's actually bent in so somebody must have either dropped the cylinder when it was out at one point because uh there's really no other way to get a bend up here now i did also take one hit at it with the hammer already and uh up in here where your shim goes it was really tight so we already got a little bit of relief there and we're almost there i can almost put this head on but uh i'm going to just real quick take a nut we're going to screw on here hit it with a hammer and uh hopefully get it to line up where we can at least get our head on all right here we go let the doctor fix you up here i'm gonna stay still don't right no we booing around Check your reflexes today, C-I-Y-Z. All right, let's see what we're working with now. You know, we're making progress. Still a little tight. We're not quite there. Now our, uh, our dowel just popped loose, and it, like I said, I'll bring you in, and you can see where that dowel just won't 100% fit in because we still have a little bit of an angle we're off. All right, try number two. Check it out. So we're starting to go on. Let me bring you in one more time because if you look around, you can see a nice even, nice even, nice even, and the one we're having issues on, we still have a little bit more clearance on the one side compared to the other. So one more final tune whacking. And this time I'm not gonna thread it down as far, so I want more of an upper hit, more towards the top of the stud. Okay, here we go. Let's see what this looks like. All right, now we got our head. We'll come on and off. All 
All right, here we go. We're going to start this motor disassembly. Everything on yellow should hopefully end up on stinky pinky. All right, that's our head that we pretty much already seen off. We already know this. Simple, simple. Take another shim out and put it up in there. Shim, I keep calling it a shim. Dow for you. Peck your heads in the cow meats. All right, next we're gonna go to our back two. Now again, I already had these loose. These weren't torqued down or nothing like that. Come off with just a breeze. Now the other two are a little bit of a pain in the ass because you're gonna have to get a wrench up in there. It's not for the speed shop. Okay, our bolts are out. See how this thing wants to act. Probably gonna need a couple of wax. There we go. Bloop. Now normally if you were doing something like this, you'd probably wanna put a rag to worry about your bottom end, but that's one good thing about doing a full motor build is you ain't really gotta worry about nothing, guys. I don't gotta worry about keeping shit clean or, or dropping parts because we're <laughs> we're literally gonna have every bit of this motor apart so no worries there dang this clip's giving me a little bit of an issue there i kind of bent my tool out of whack you can see here this little cheap pittsburgh picker oh duh might be might help if we push it out the side we took the clip out from huh yeah that might that might help a little bit damn that's something just don't want to come out too easy there we go all right got it on this end all right here we go so there's our piston now i know oh yeah look at this <laughs> here get up close to this See, I knew our bearing was shot. Look at this, guys. Look at all this play. And another thing I want to point out real quick on this bike, from the uh, Yamaha to the 125 this year, you can see this is a steel sleeve cylinder, where you got a steel sleeve, and when you go to replace it, you actually bore that out and then go with a bigger piston. Or something like on the uh, KX, this is what you'll call a nickel-plated cylinder. So um, that's just a plating and not a steel insert. So what they'll have to do is they'll, uh, you know, clean that up and re-coat that. So you're basically replacing it with the same size piston where something like this uh, steel sleeve, we're actually going to have them machine that out and we're going to be using, we have a bigger piston to put in this thing. Also, we got the 70 millimeter piston for you Yamaha guys that really know your stuff, you would know that we're on our last bore on this. So uh, not only are we going to bring this 250 back to life, but we're also going to be on the biggest piston you could put in this cylinder before I mean you really went customer crazy. So it's kind of good and bad at the same time because that being said, if this uh engine does blow up on us, say in the future, you would be looking at having to replace your sleeve. Uh, because we're on our last bore. So once I take this to the shop and they bore this out for that 70 millimeter piston, that's our last, that's our fourth bore. So we're going to be on the fourth bore on this bad boy. Biggest piston you could have in it. All right, what's next? Uh, while we're here, might as well pop off this uh, front sprocket that is on there just so loose. Look, I can even move the nut, guys. So it's kind of ironic with this bike because anything else, it seemed like the guy was trying to prove that he was stronger than somebody. I mean, he just had a crazy amount of torque on some shit. And then this front sprocket is just loose as can be, so don't really know who was if he was working on his bike his whole time or who was working on it but that's kind of odd should probably be using my other hammer but this baby was close by here we go all right yep can remove that front sprocket by hand so <laughs> it's definitely not ideal but what are you gonna do? All right, next thing we're gonna shimmy this thing around and pop off the Kickstarter. All 
All right. <clears throat> we're back. I had to get my nice uh, motor stand here because we're so professional now. I'm going to start from the bottom. So far, we all look like the same size, same size, same size. Here's our long one. Super long, super long. Uh, that's all of them. All right, let's go over to these ones. Then. So it looks like really all of our clutch case bolts are pretty much the same size, except for super long up top by our oil fill and our mid length by our uh, exhaust valve actuator arm or whatever the hell you want to call it. We'll give her a couple of taps. She's starting to go now. All right. Here we go. She's coming off. All right. First thing you want to check for, make sure nothing dropped out on you. Flip your thing over, take a look, make sure nothing seems out of place or a washer that's going to come loose. So our clutch cover's off, and one thing I noticed right away looking at us was, well, first, actually, I've seen this. So you've seen, you know, standard, 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 and a blackie aftermarket. So somebody definitely, uh, definitely ugh, replaced this bolt in our clutch, and you could tell on our case, um, even by the distance here right away, that this bolt must have uh, worked its way out at some point and that was rotating and hitting this case there. Now it looks like the throw out on this bike instead of using, well, that's still technically a ball bearing. <laughs> so you can see they just use like a uniballer as their uh, bearing system on this bike. Or is that another ball up in there too? What the hell even is that? What in the hell even is that? <laughs> All right, next I might have to go grab a fatter fatter sleeve of sockets here I think I'm maxed out let me see what I got here wow 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 we'll be back after we hit the box all right here we go we're back with the big boys here I got the fatter socket gonna do our little penny penny jammer Damn, I don't think I got it. I think we just went right through our penny was all we did. <laughs> Where did my penny go? <laughs> well, I think we lost our penny. I'm going to try one more. Try one more, then we're going to have to. We got uh, dinner reservations we're about to miss. We're probably going to have to come back. I'll hit this with my air impact or something. All right, watch your arm because I'm going to be cranking up. Golly, damn. Holy. God. Hey, look at that penny. That motherfucker's torqued on there. How much fucking pounds they put on this son of a bitch? There we go. All right, so we got one loose. Oh, that one's not bad. <laughs> that one came loose like nothing. Here we go. I'm gonna check on the back side, make sure I don't get none out of place here. Looks like we got another washer there. So just like looks look like just washer and bearing. Little collar, of course.
What time is it? We gotta get going, right? Ah, all right, guys. We gotta hit. We got dinner to get. We got dinner to get. I don't want to stop working. Uh, back in a snap. <clears throat> all right, we're back from dinner. I just want to show you guys a couple things I've been playing around with this motor and show you a couple of differences from a Honda and a, this Yamaha motor of this year. Uh, first thing you can see on this Kickstarter, how when you kick the Kickstarter on a Yamaha, it's going to throw that whole gear out. Uh, and that's what's going to transfer. Where on the Honda, the gear would have been out the whole time. And there, there was that back gear that when you kicked that threw out and uh, transferred to this gear where... Like I said, on the this Yamaha, it's going to kick out as it goes. Where on the uh, Honda, it was just out the whole time. Also, you can see down here, definitely a little bit different different style uh, shifting mechanism. And I'll go through a couple gears for you guys, just so you guys can see that. That might have been already up already. Anyway, what else was there? Oh yeah, also you can see here, you can see this seal, the way how it's positioned. Now on the Honda CR motor, it was facing the other way. And I looked at other videos as well, and that's the way how Honda uh, put that seal in. I know even in my last video, uh, people said I had put my seal in backwards, but uh, you can see the Yamaha is facing this way where the Honda one was facing the other way. All right, let's get back to uh, throwing, uh, taking this thing apart. Another little difference is this push rod. I see here you got two lines in the back and one line up front. I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but I'll just make a note of that when uh, we reassemble. So we'll pull our Kickstarter off. And we'll pull this, uh, pull this out now. So you can see here how it's got that like spline gear. So that's a difference from the Yamaha to a Honda motor, something right there. I'm going to take our bearing. Let's get that washer out. Now this uh, shifting mechanism is definitely going to be a lot simpler than the Honda to put back together, that's for sure. Let me get my snappers here. There's a washer on top of that gear. And another washer on the back side. So I'm not sure if this drum is actually going to pull out or if it's going to go out after we uh, split the cases. But if you come around here, <clears throat> you can see we're in gear right now. And this little stubby would be neutral. So we'll know when we reassemble this, you got this spring here with like the L shape is going to tuck down into there. All right, last thing I think on this side should be this collar. Now the bearing doesn't feel that bad on this side, but I can definitely feel even over here that I can wiggle that bearing on the other side is totally shot. Okay, looks like we got all of our standard Allen keys on this side. This one here is a little gritty. You might want to dig some of that stuff out now. That's often the common way you strip these Allen heads out. You don't get the dirt out and you don't even get your, you know, your bit halfway in. All right, we just took all of our bolts out. Now on this motor, they're all the same size except for this. Oh, snap, where'd it come out of? I believe it was this raised one. Let me just show this one on film. Here's my uh, film notes. Anyway, that's where our long bolt goes to. And this would be pretty simple. On this motor, I mean, you wouldn't accidentally 
put this one basically in any other spot. So that's one thing I'll give that to uh, Yamaha on this year. That's going to be easy. Well, not that it's hard or any other, but, you know, definitely save us a couple seconds. All right, just for the heck of it, I think I'm going to, uh, where's my good old mallet here? We're going to give these things a couple taps, see if for some reason our motor just wants to pop apart for us. Oh, come on, come on, loose over here. Look at that. Well, there you go. So, <laughs> I should have bought that damn uh, crank splitter tool the very first time when I was going to split that motor for the CR. Uh, unfortunately, I I, uh, I bought it this time and we didn't even need it. So that, that popped apart real easy. I don't even think I need to remove that. Okay, let me double check. We're not losing any washers or anything here. Seen that or not. All right, so remember where we've seen that epoxy patch up, guys? Now, if you look through here, you can see where that part of the case was definitely split at one point and where they repaired it. Uh, where did our, uh, and this is for the clutch. So that's down in there like that. That's what they had rigged up. Uh, so, I mean, it was holding for them. Hopefully, it's going to hold for us. So, here's our long rod that was bent on the CR motor. So, that's looking good so far. I can definitely tell the shafts on these aren't as hollow as the CRs. If you look at the end of our uh, forks here, look pretty decent. So we only had one washer on this part of our transmission and nothing else. Oh, there goes our whole shift drum. So that'll just come apart in one piece. Look at that, the bearing's still on there. Well, here's the gears to our transmission <coughs> and just to be a hundred percent sure if we have the uh, WR or not we're gonna be able to count our gears and and check that way as well oh shit on these transmissions normally your gears will all the time be you know in pretty good shape on the outside here mostly what you're looking for is the inside here or your dogs they call them or something like that and you can see here we don't have a perfectly square edge, but that's pretty good for a 30 year old uh, transmission. Also, the main thing you want to look for is like the inner parts here. As I can see, a little bit is, is rounded out there, but nothing too bad. So these gears look pretty good. Let's get this sandwich back together here that fell apart on us. And just a closer look now that I got a gear out. This is what I'm talking about is the edges on these where it catches in the inner part of the gear. So you can see on this one, 
you know, even on this edge, we're not 100% square. That's where, you know, a lot of your wear happens and that's what will kick you out of gear. All right, let's try to get this thing back together. And that should have just went on like that. Looks like I got to use my tool after all. So that cranks out. I'll go ahead and get this motor laid out better now. Get cleaned up and get organized. So you can see I cracked the box open and checked out our new uh, piston here. You can see 7-0. So that was the... Um, uh, what do you call it 70 millimeter or you can see on this one I don't know if you guys can see it that good it goes to uh, 69 all right anyway you can see our uh, new piston will not even go in that cylinder yet where our old one with the rings in it still will just drop right on through it's the next day I'm not quite sure where we left off yesterday but anyway we definitely have a YZ motor disassembled and on the table. We'll go over this a little bit more, but uh, for right now, I got to get this exhaust valve out of this cylinder so we can get these two cylinders off to the shop. So, so far it seems pretty simple. I'm kind of new to these exhaust valves. Figuring this stuff out. That just kind of clips into that part there. But I gotta admit, I'm definitely not a fan of these. This is a nasty, nasty part of the engine here. This is like the uh, proctology of two stroke in here. <laughs> Huh, now how the hell you get that part out now? I thought that valve was just gonna slide right out. And maybe I think it's supposed to, but I just think it's just so built up, it almost seems like. I'll give this thing a couple. Oh my god, is that supposed to just pull out? Ah! Huh? I'm pretty sure that's all that's gonna happen. I just think there's too much. You can see how much like uh, carbon buildup is in there. Well, finally, I was hesitant because I've never done this before, but I'm pretty sure I didn't mess anything up. Check it out. I think I found the culprit. If we look on this one little valve here, you can see the edge of it is missing. And in my opinion, that's probably what happened. The edge of this broke off got lodged up in that cylinder banged around banged around until it met on the sidewall and jammed up I'll take that piece off so you can see individually so you can see a nice chunk broken off of that end compared to that one so something like a chunk of metal like that breaks off goes in your cylinder that can definitely uh, lead to your engine season and blowing up I want to show you guys one thing on this uh, cylinder I don't know if this is factory or what, because it kind of looks factory, but uh, I don't know what the deal is. Maybe they had, uh, like, their castings didn't turn out 100% this year, and they added, like, a weld on here. But, uh, you know, that's something you don't see every day is a big old chunky welds on the side of a motor like that. But, uh, I mean, it kind of looks factory. I'm not quite sure. Anybody knows, let me know. Again, this is going to be a, this is a 02 KX125. Is that something from the factory, or are we looking at some type of uh, repair job? 
There's our two pieces, pretty simple exhaust valve. I think I can figure that out, no problem. Shouldn't have nothing to worry about. Go over a couple things on this uh, YZ motor. Here's one of our clutch. Let me tip my camera again. Here's one of our clutch rings, if anybody was interested in checking that out. Looks like there's still a decent amount of material on there. And the basket itself doesn't look too notched out. But uh, I didn't pop that out yet and really take a good look. But um, one thing, guys, seriously, what in the hell is this thing? I've, had, I've held this thing in my hand for psh, at least 10 minutes, and I'm, I still can't figure it out. Uh, so let me know. Once again, this would be like a 88 through 91 YZ250. Is this one piece, guys, or like what am I looking at? It almost looks like they slipped that bearing on, then put that uh, end piece and welded that in. I've been looking over this thing, and I've seen this one pin mark. Um, so here's like a pin hole here you can see, but I don't think that's holding that shaft on because it's welded right there. So let me know. Is there a way to replace that bearing, or is this all one piece? Anyway... That cylinder is off and crusty, but you can tell somebody spent so much time polishing that. Uh, but we got to get these things cleaned up. I don't know what I was thinking trying to rush to the shop the other day because I can't be dropping off these cylinders all dirty like this. And again, that's not something anybody should do. Uh, if you're going to take your thing to the shop to get it done, you know, obviously make sure you clean it and first and things like that. I was in a rush and uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't drop them off the other day because then, you know, you get your cylinder back all fresh and ready to go and you still got to clean the thing. So that's half ass backwards. Not something you want to do. When two hours later, here we go. And all in all, probably honestly an hour uh, scrubbing these cylinders between the two, I'd say, uh, with the exhaust valves and things like that. But uh, pretty happy with how they came out. Once again, this is your polished look that somebody went crazy and spent hours and hours. But in the long run, guys, uh, if you do something like this to your bike, if you are going to clean it in the future, it does uh, make it that much easier to clean. You know, you got that much less of a surface for uh, dirt and grease to stick to. But then again, good old degreaser and a nice uh, brass brush will scrub aluminum up nice and clean. That's basically what I did with the CR500 uh, piston, I mean cylinder. And, um, you know, I'm happy with happy with the way how both of these look. But honestly, something like the uh, KX, this is going to be the 125. I really kind of almost want to black it out, man. And just, you know, maybe do totally black motor, totally black everything except for the frame. Um, but over here on the Yamaha, nice polished finish. And uh, for that year, 89, we're going back classic. So we're going to do a nice bright white frame, how it should be, and stick with the blue graphics as well for that time period. And uh, this thing's going to look great, man. I mean, nice polished motor. I might do some white accents on the motor and then do a bright white frame. Psh, it's going to be a blizzard out there. Better watch it. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for today's video. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you stay tuned. we got a lot coming up with these engines between uh, basically three bikes now. So don't forget, we still got the old KTM 350 to screw around with and stop that motor from leaking and figure out what's going on with that. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.